Hello and welcome to Red Band Trailer. Today's guest is Mindy Kaling, the star writer and director sometimes on The Office, who's also written an amazing book called Is Everyone Hanging Out Without Me? and Other Concerns. I think Mindy's right outside. I'll summon her with my mini conch. Come inside for I Hide from me Don't hide from me Mindy Kaling, thank you for joining us in the Red Band trailer today. Thanks for having me. This is, I'm, I, I've been really excited about this for a while and I, the interesting thing is it's the least preparation I've ever had to do for an interview because I'm already like a, a, a font of knowledge about you. And, and like I'm an obsessed fan. Compliment. No, just a nice fan. That's great. I love that. I heard, I actually first heard about you years ago. I want to say it was like the early 2000s when you, you wrote and starred in the play Mad and Ben. Yes. Which, I don't know how aware our viewers are of this amazing idea, but you played Ben Affleck in a play. Of course, yes. Off-Broadway, correct? <laughs> yes, yeah. I'm sure you've been asked this a million times, and the where do you get your idea question is irritating, but I have to know, like, what compelled you to play Ben Affleck? Uh, I was with my best friend. We were living in New York, and we didn't have jobs. It was babysitting. And um, we'd always, I mean, you have your favorite girlfriends that you do bits with, and our recurring bit in the subway or to the grocery store or anything was that I was, I would play Ben Affleck, and she'd be Matt Damon, and we would just kind of, like, f around, and it would it was our most amusing recurring bit that we had. And then we just wrote a really weird uh, play on it because we had so much time because we didn't have jobs. And uh, we acted in it because we didn't want to pay people. And then, yeah, that's how, like, my first thing I did was playing Ben Affleck. I think that's amazing. And then your friend played Matt Damon. Yes, my friend, is... who's very much taller than me and blonde and very thin. <laughs> she played the sh shorter one. She played Matt Damon. That's brilliant. There's other, th now you originated the role, but there's, uh, aren't there other actors playing Matt and Ben now? Yes, I've never heard anyone say I've originated the role, but yes, you I You originated the role. Yeah, ever so often you'll find out, well, the play continued off Broadway when we came to L.A., and then there's like, you know, regional productions, I'll get a check for like $6.21 from like a high school <laughs> that's like, we wanted to do the play and we wanted the right, so it, it happens, like girls around the country will sometimes put it on. And I especially like that you played Ben because nothing against Matt Damon, but I've always related to Affleck more. Well, Ben Affleck is, I think, the more fun part. I mean, anyone would think he's that. More, right? He seems more flamboyant. Yeah, and he's more just like, he just seems like at the time, and I don't know anything about him. This is before like Wikipedia. We didn't ever see. He just seems like this awesome guy who makes, it, in a, the way that we portrayed him, just like makes big, bold moves. And like, you know, when he was in J-Lo's music video, you remember like oh, no. all that? He like, did not, re he didn't hold back. And I, I appreciated didn't. that. I know everybody yeah. hated Benifer, and but I thought it was amazing how, how demonstrative and bold they were about their love. Like he actually kissed her ass in that video, literally. Yeah, like he had, it was like his guy friends had told him, you know, it's going to say this. And he's like, I don't care, I'm in love. He just lived large, made huge choices um, and was kind of a jock. Like I loved playing a jock. I did that for that whole like seventh month period of time. I've only played with Kelly <laughs> on the show and then this like the opposite of Kelly. So you, since you brought up Kelly, I think we can organically move into talking about The Office. <laughs> yeah. Now that is the sh you are on The Office playing Kelly. You also are a writer and you direct the show, which is it's super exciting to me as an aspiring director. I think if I hadn't been there for eight years as an actor and a writer, it might be challenging going into it. But you know, we just have like a, not that much can happen in this like three room set that we have. So you have this wonderful book, Is Everyone Hanging Out Without Me? And, uh, uh, is thank that you. A, and Other Concerns? Yes. Yeah. I want to get the full title. <laughs> thank you. I read your book the day it came out. Did you really? Yeah, I kindled it immediately. Oh, that's so awesome. What a nice, I, I'm going to, that's like the nicest thing I've heard. I think a lot of people were very excited about your book. Oh. And with good reason, because it was hugely entertaining. Thank you. I have to say I'm kind of a connoisseur of the celebrity memoir. Like, I have a lot of them. Did you read Rebel House? Yes, it's amazing. Rob Lowe's is pretty awesome. Things I only tell my friends. I yeah. think that's what it's called. Yeah. Love that. I loved it too. It was so cool hearing about him growing up in Malibu when there was like no one there. Yeah, and he convincingly sort of told you that he was a loser growing up. And at the end of it, I was like, poor Rob Lowe. <laughs> you totally he, bought it. I was like, poor Rob Lowe when I finished reading that. And I, that's very hard to pull off. I think if you look like Rob Lowe, it means you're probably a pretty good writer. Anyway, I loved your book, but I have to say there was one thing I was wondering about that I'm not sure if you addressed. And that is... 
the, the perilous and interesting transition from anonymous person into famous person. How do you feel about that? Uh, personally, do you get? I mean, personal? do you get recognized all the time? Uh, not really. I think it's because I'm like a normal sized woman, like across the board. And I think that when you see a celebrity, they're usually extremely tiny. And um, also because I'm a writer, I think people just mostly think they like went to college with me. In it's surprising to me because you're on the, like a like a hit NBC show. Well, you know, there's like 18 people on our show. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but it happens uh, when I'm in Boston more than here. Because here, you People like, are used to it. And the Charlize Theron is like on the street, you know, so they're going <laughs> to stop her. It is crazy to see how people respond to someone like her. What is it I don't like? think I've ever really seen that before. She's like, a- like approaching her sobbing. Like I saw that, that happened to us one day. And Already sobbing, like a person was crying while approaching her. Instantaneous sobbing, and it was a it pretty. was a foreigner who was sobbing, like as if she was at like the the shrine of the Virgin of Medjugorje, and it was saying, "You're so beautiful, you're so beautiful." It was her beauty. It wasn't like I was a character like in Monster, and you no, really it was she was crying because that... she had never beheld somebody who looked like that before. Her beauty made someone cry. She's so beautiful. No, I know she's beautiful. Like I, she's <laughs> no, stunning. No, I know. But can you, can you imagine? But like, like I, <laughs> yeah. I mean, like that's like the, her beauty made. That's like Helen of Troy. Like I mean, that's like historical beauty. At least I kind of spitefully want somebody who looks like her to be kind of flaky mm-hmm. or crazy because I don't want her to like win on every level. <laughs> but she's super intelligent and and cool and like I guess can cook and like all this stuff that's oh, really? not fair. So you you want to talk about guys? Yeah, sure. Let's talk about guys. I feel like we should talk about guys. Um, so I'm single, recently single. Mm-hmm. And um, what I've noticed is looking at guys in general is that every girl who is a comedy writer, smart, funny girl, they only want funny nerds. Uh, totally. Right. Yes, I will totally agree with this. Funny nerds. Jewish guys. I hope that's not anti-Semitic. No, they, it's like Ten, you're so accurate right now. You have like a type. Yeah. So I thought, okay, that's going to be great. My type will come out and it'll be some kind of, some version of like the, the Paul Rudd, with, but with glasses on, yes. you know, who went to brown. This time being single, it's not at all the case. I only like like hot guys, like blonde men, which I've never liked in my life. That's interesting. Like Bradley Cooper is now who I'm like, that's who I, like unironic, this is who I'm, I think about now. Do you suppose it's biology? Like as we as we sort of edge into our thirties, oh, that's that interesting. Perhaps we're looking for more of like more of a like a, a rugged like sperm shooting, like <laughs> like sperm shooting, like a rugged like sperm shooting father figures as opposed to because I mean like the nerd- Rivers Cuomo, the Rivers right. Cuomo, right? right? Because like the the nerdy the nerdy comedy guy, I think on some basic like primal level. You, like that guy doesn't seem like he's gonna protect the cave. I think you are onto something, <laughs> Diablo. I really do because how could a girl at thirteen who I would have de- Kevin McDonald from Kids in the Hall? Yeah. Okay. Dream man is a twelve year old. Wow. Pretty t- weird. Rivers Cuomo. Then maybe like when I've, I was I've had out, a crush on Rivers Cuomo as well. I mean, I mean, he's cuter. I mean, you know. But then you know, then like people like Larry David. I mean, these are who. And now I'm thirty two years old. And to me, I'm like, they're cads. That's the secret thing. Oh, no, they totally are. And I hate that they get away with it yes. because everybody's like, oh, it drives me crazy. It's, it's like, the biggest scam because when you cast a cad. He must be the nicest cad, guy. He's a nerd. Yes, you cast no. a cad and you cast Gosling, Reynolds, Bradley Cooper. These are your cast, but that's not the real cads. Those guys maybe are boring. They want to yeah. like play the bongos or like talk about religion. They're, they're boring, but they're not like the cads who are nerds all their life and now want to like cash in with like a 19-year-old. So, you're you're totally right. Yeah. The minute these guys have like access to like to like power, mm-hmm. it's like suddenly it's like they might as well be Bradley Cooper. Yeah. So then I'm sort of like, well, then why don't I just try for like? Because in my mind, like the Bradley Cooper guys, like I'm tired of f-ing models. I just like want someone I can like wake up and like makes me laugh and like wants to read like Woody Allen's screenplays with me and like. Oh my god! I wish toast. we were alone right now because I have so much I could talk about. But it's just like you know, we'll we'll get there. Um, 
Thanks for talking about guys. No, it's like totally, it's it's totally true though. Since you're Bradley married. Bradley probably is sick of that. I, I think he is. I'll help I run into Look, him sometime. Like in Dirty Dancing when Johnny says he's sick of like these gorgeous rich women like <laughs> throwing themselves at him and like putting diamonds in his pocket. Like he's interested in baby. Yeah, that's why Bridget Jones is so good. Because these two yes. guys are like, we're sick of hot women. We want this <laughs> chubby mess. And I'm like, oh, okay. I, that's a movie I can get behind. You know what? Would you be willing to join me out at the Tiki Bar for a game of Would You Rather? Yeah, that sounds great. Yes, let's go. Here we are at the Tiki Bar, and we are ready to play Would You Rather with Mindy Kaling. Are you ready? Yeah, nervous. Okay, so I want you to, I want you to really give me honest answers and think hard about what I'm about to okay. propose. Okay. Would you rather go an entire year without eating in a restaurant or go an entire year without buying a single new item of clothing? Restaurant. Really? Yeah, I need to buy clothing. Like, is that important for, like, your emotional health? Yeah, I memorize my credit card number. Like, I just to buy clothing. <laughs> All right, cool. Yeah. Number two. Would you rather wear the same outfit for 30 days straight and you are not allowed to explain it to anybody? So you can't say, oh, I'm doing this because of some, like, would you rather. You have to either wear the same outfit for 30 days straight, mm -hmm. prompting everyone around you to wonder if you're crazy, which is what I think would happen. Okay. Or you have to in appear in an episode of The Office wearing a bra and underwear and no makeup? I would rather appear in the office bra, underwear, no makeup. I feel like it, your feelings about clothes are really becoming clear in this. You're just, you well, I think clothes. that would be fun, actually. It would be, it would be freeing. Well, because I could like go work out. I'd get like one of those celebrity trainers and be like, kill me. You would prepare? Yeah, all I want to do is like, the great thing about getting married to me is that people get to hire a trainer for eight weeks and they're just like decimate this. Would you rather Sing the national anthem at the Super Bowl or do a four minute solo dance number at the Oscars? Dance number. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, this morning I thought about this myself and I picked national anthem because really? the idea of a four minute solo on stage at the Oscars was so frightening to me. Well, I mean, I, has it been choreographed by someone? Yeah, I could it practice? has. It has. Yeah, because that high note in the national anthem. <laughs> it is kind of scary. It, that is too much. Would you rather. Host SNL or win a Grammy for your audiobook? Oh, wow. Um, that one is really tough. Hosting SNL, I'm sure you've had this. It just seems like the most the, fun. The coolest thing anyone can ever do. God, that seems great. I think but I You probably... were on What Up With That, weren't you? Yes. Which is amazing. Thank you for remembering that. Yeah, no, that was <laughs> exciting. Things. It's like my favorite thing, and you were on That's it. That's an amazing sketch. I love yeah. that sketch. Um, but I think it would probably be the Grammy for my audiobook. And I'll say this, because I think that would be the only way I would ever win a Grammy, and in my efforts to win an EGOT, as you have also, I'm sure. <laughs> Do you want an EGOT? I want an EGOT. It that is would exciting. Be, that's the only way is like that back entry way of getting a Grammy. All right then. Well, thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you. I, I feel like you you really hit that out of the park. I did. Well, I don't want this to end. I love I love being here in your house. Good. I'm glad. This is the first thing you bought when you got your Oscar was your tiki bar. I swear I bought this tiki bar like before I had any other furniture here. Really? This was like all I wanted in life. Like all I wanted was to have like a waterfall in my yard, which unfortunately isn't on right now, and a tiki bar. And like those dreams came true. Bigger than the Oscar. <laughs> Think about what you're saying. I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking hard and I'm standing by what I said. Look, Patsy, I know you feel like a pretty big deal right now because your movie made like half a billion dollars at the box office or whatever. But that doesn't mean you have to be like all cold and distant with me. I mean, we haven't even made love in like two days. Like that's, that's unacceptable. Like I have needs. I need you. You'd think I would have learned something about boys during that conversation with Mindy, huh? Oh well. That was a pretty amazing interview, wasn't it? You might say we're all flailing for Kaling. Thank you for joining us, and until next time, remember, it's not your fault. <laughs>